It's time now for uh, the monthly community foundation program. Good morning, Bryce. Good morning. I, I feel like uh, I was telling the professor, we, we need to get you some walk-up music. Okay. I think anything by ACDC will work since yeah. you know you share the yeah. name I can of the singer. Make some suggestions there, maybe. All right. We, we might we have to do, do that. that. So Yeah. Hey, got a lot of things going on at the foundation. Yes. First of all, the sun's out. It, yeah, that's always for now. When we think about spring, we think about new stuff. So we're kind of yes. excited about um, some things going on at the foundation. Um, we have, of course, we've been talking about our new software rollout. Yeah. So we've got that database in place. Again, I'll put a reminder out there. If you're a fun founder and has a fund and are not signed up for our online fund statements and access to your account, I'd encourage you to do that because there's some okay. good information available through those. So if you have questions about getting signed up for that or um, have questions about finding where information is, we'd love to be able to help you with that. So, All right. um, and of course, donor advised funds, those are ones that can make suggestions about where grants go from their funds, um, can actually make that online. So a great level of service here. So. I'm talking about online, we had just gone live last month, and so now we are uh, have a whole month of experience with online grant applications. Yes. So folks can actually fill out a grant application online and submit that, and, and we've, we've had a few do that, and it's turned out to be a good process. So um, all of that information is available on our website, NICF.org, and you can see a link on our grants page to be able to fill out those applications. Um, if you have any questions, of course, with the new system, there's always we always find a few bugs. Okay. Um, I'm sure you're probably familiar with that. With yes. Radio station, yes. and you're in the middle of adding another location, so always those few bugs to work out that yeah um, going on, but um, it's it's worked well so far. So. NICF.org, and you can click on the grants page and and find um, the applications available there. Talking about grants, we have a couple of grants that are available. For most of our grants, our community support and our impact grants, we don't have a deadline, um, but we do have some grant cycles that do have a deadline. So right now, we're in the process of accepting applications for the Kiwana Union Township and Liberty Township endowment funds. Okay, those are funds that grant for projects specifically in those communities. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have an organization that's serving either Union Township or Liberty Township or the Fulton or Kiwana area, um, we'd love to see a grant application from you. We have $2,500 available for each of those grants. Um, and they can be, sometimes we grant that all to one organization, sometimes it's split between multiple projects, but. Um, organization serving folks in those communities. Okay. Um, so that application deadline is May 8th. So folks have a little, a little over time. a month yeah. to do that. But um, we always get the question, and I had this conversation already this week, how difficult is it to fill out your grant application? <laughs> and I say, if you can tell me about your project and your organization, you can do our grant application. And yep. If you have questions, don't hesitate to call. We're just we're trying to help good people do good things in our community, and so make that process as simple as possible. Absolutely. So, again, the Kiwana Union Township and Liberty Township Endowment Grants are available. Deadline is May 8th. Head to NICF.org and click on the grants page to start that process. Okay. Something else that we're looking for, um, this year our annual report is going to be focused on the theme of art. Okay. We have some pretty cool artists here. I don't know if yeah. you noticed that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to choose from. That's another nice thing about uh, Fulton County as yeah. a whole. Is it's like everywhere you turn, you have a local artist. Yes, you have a local artist. We have our own local art gallery downtown. Yes. The theater, if you walk through there, there's some really neat art there. Yeah. Um, I've seen some art around the community on buildings, and just every time I turn around, there's somebody doing something really neat. So yeah. we're looking for local artists, and we've already had a bunch submitted, but always can use more um, to feature in our annual report. So okay. if you have a local, a local artist is listening and would like to 
submit something possibly for us to be able to use in our annual report, you can get that to our marketing director, um, Hannah, and you can send that by email to Hannah, and that's H-A-N-N-A-H at N-I-C-F dot O-R-G, okay. um, or feel free to call us, um, call the main N-I-C-F line, 574-223-2227. Um, and we'd love to be able to help feature some art from local artists. So right. um, we are asking for submissions to happen by April 7th. Okay. So a little bit shorter time frame on that. But yeah. um, like I said, we've already had some pretty cool artwork. I'm excited to see what we're able to feature because we've got some really amazing local artists here. So yeah. excited about that. So. Well, with that, we're going to get into the heart of the program. Yes. We have some guests with us. and. Um, just to kind of take a step back a couple of years, um, so the Lilly Endowment offered community foundations around the state an opportunity to work with some planning grants and then some implementation grants. Yes. And so the first process was for communities to go through a local community assessment and some conversations locally, some surveys, um, all those things were included and we as a, as a community foundation did that towards the end of 2019 and early 2020. Of course that was right before COVID happened. Yeah. So that was a really interesting time but yes. Um, so we brought together a bunch of community leaders, had conversations, um, got some feedback and there were some issues that I don't know that really surprised anybody but rose to the top in those conversations. So over the next three months, we're going to be focusing on some of these areas that we've been working on, sometimes publicly, sometimes behind the scenes, um, looking at some of the needs that were identified. But some of the things that we're going to hear over the next um, few months, one of the significant needs that came to the top was youth. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think back to that point, yeah. we did not have a youth center. We did not. There were conversations happening about it, but we didn't yeah. have a youth center. So, And it seemed like there had been conversations for quite a while. It has, and it, it just never grew to the point where it it has now, where it's successful and we have a really yes. awesome organization. Yes. So that's one. Another one that came to the top was housing. Mm -hmm. um, if you've not been under a rock for the last three years, you realize that housing is a significant need at, at yeah. really at all levels. Yes. Um, so that was a conversation that happened and I'm excited to um, see that the, the community is working on a housing study here in the near future. We're excited yeah. to be a part of that as well, um, supporting that. But the one need that we really heard the most from everybody was conversation about substance abuse. Okay. And I don't think that came out of, came as a surprise to anybody. Yeah. Um, it, it's one of those things that in our society, it's it's unfortunately a fairly common area that, that folks deal with problems through the use of substances, I would say. Yes. So today we're fortunate to have with us Hector and Debbie Fernandez. Um, Welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning. So one of the programs that has been serving this area, and we're talking a little bit about the history, and I'll let you guys talk about that here in a minute, is a program called Celebrate Recovery. So I've never heard of Celebrate Recovery before. Tell me what that is. Celebrate Recovery is a 12-step program. It start, actually started in Lake Forest, California, back in 1991. And it's been around for going on 32 years right now. It's a program that deals with any hurt, habit, or hang up, not just substance abuse, but hurts of all kinds. And uh, it's a wonderful program that just deals with the meat of the problems. And, and I think it's interesting, you, you mentioned something really key there. We think about substance abuse, but substance abuse is often a result of, or sometimes maybe mental health comes in. Those two topics always seem to come up together. So 
So it's not just for substance abuse. He said hurts, habits, hang-ups. So if somebody's mm -hmm. dealing with something, it doesn't necessarily have to be substance abuse. This is a, would you, would you say it's a community that supports all? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we tell people in Celebrate Recovery, every single one of us are broken. Everybody. I don't care who you are. I mean, if you say that you're not uh, actually less than one, then Celebrate Recovery is denial, stepping out. But we fill those broken pieces with, with different things, whether it's drugs, whether it's food, whether it's sex, whether it's anxiety, pornography. There's just so many things that we will stuff those holes full of until it gets to the point where we can't function the way that we're supposed to. And Celebrate Recovery helps you work through that process. It helps you navigate through that hurt, habit, or hang up. So. Yeah, and it, it's interesting. I One comment that always sticks with me is somebody goes to celebrate recovery for the first time and they look around and they're like, wow, we're all the same here. It's, it's really yeah. a community that, that supports each other and it doesn't matter what your hurt or habit is it's a community there that's that's really supports each other so Hector you mentioned a little bit about <clears throat> the history of the program as a whole maybe talk to us a little bit about the history in Fulton County of Celebrate Recovery okay first of all thank you foundation for having us here thank you giant radio for having us here it's always good to oh, see Paul yeah. Ryan up uh, Right here in Fulton County, Celebrate Recovery started six years ago, and that was right across the street at the jail. Thank you, Sheriff Sailors, County Commissioners, for giving us the okay to start that. And that was six years ago. Uh, actually, five years ago, Celebrate Recovery started at St. John's Lutheran Church. Four years ago, we added another one here at the Cross, or excuse me, the Cross Church on West Third Street. Uh, three years later, they got one at DeLong, Indiana, at the Gospel Lighthouse Church. So, so you mentioned the locations, um, and I know there was a lot of thinking involved in, in planning of times if somebody's listening and says, hey, you know what, I'd like to check this out, remind us of the locations and also give us the, the times and days that those programs meet. Okay, so on Mondays, uh, they meet at the Cross Church, like Hector said, 100 West 3rd Street. The meal is from 5 to 6, and then Celebrate Recovery itself starts at 6. It's from 6 to 8. We have child care from 6 to 8 by uh, background-approved um, adults that run that. On Tuesdays, I believe their meal is at 5 o'clock, too, over at St. John's Lutheran on 4th and Jefferson. Uh, their meal is at 5, and their Celebrate Recovery starts at 6 as well, and I think they have child care. Uh, and then in DeLong, I'm not sure the address, I know it's on, is it off of Center, Center Street? Street. Uh, their meal is at 6 o'clock on Fridays, uh, and Celebrate Recovery, I believe, starts at 6.30. So, so, and I don't, I don't know if they have so, child care. So there's three, what you're saying is there's three evenings a week that I can participate in, in one or all of these programs Absolutely. as well. And, and you talked about earlier when you walk in, we call ourselves Forever Family. Because it's nice to have a group of people that aren't pointing fingers and pointing out your flaws. They just, they hug and yeah. they just support each other. Yes, we hug, even through the pandemic. <laughs> so, because there, there's healing in hugs. Yes. We believe that. Yeah. And, and Hector, you mentioned the Celebrate Recovery Inside. I know that's something that you're still involved with. Talk to us maybe a little bit about how somebody gets involved in that. And I know part of the goal is if somebody is a part of that program on the inside, when they are out, to feed into these other programs as well. Okay, that's a program where uh, an inmate would put a requisition in and the commander and the co-commander would approve that inmate uh, attending and it's on Thursdays. Uh, I wish we could serve a meal there, but there are yeah. meals provided. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, commander. Uh, yes, and it's a group where we do the same thing. We have a time of fellowship, a time of worship, and when we get into the 12 step program, we watch testimonies on the big screen TV and we just 
support and encourage the inmates to get plugged in, whether it be in Fulton County, Miami County, Stark County, you know, celebrate recoveries everywhere throughout the states here. I think one of the things that we've seen through the pandemic is the need for support groups. I mean, where we as humans need fellow humans to, whether it's just for the company or support, and, and we see that level of success in any program go way up when, we, when you have others supporting you. And I think that's one of the neat observations about Celebrate Recovery is the fact that it's a group of people really supporting each other wherever they are. So, so my next question, how do I get involved? I'm listening, and maybe I want to come to celebrate recovery. You mean recovery, the but celebrate recovery been. in the jail? Because I could give you some well, tips how to get in there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably. We probably should edit that part of the program out. We'll start at yeah. uh, the, the how do we get involved? Starting at the cross. Yeah, yeah it's okay. We're gonna yeah, go already, short route. So, um, but I do want to say say one thing though. Uh, we have, and Brian and Hector and I were talking about it in there. We have one gentleman just from the jail because, like Hector said, we go into the jails. I have the women from. Uh, what is it, 1 to 2.30 and Hector's in there with the men, but from one gentleman in his program inside the jail, we now have at the cross four generations in his family. We wow. have his wife, his children, his mother, and his grandmother that attend. Yeah. And then we just had another young lady in there that's got three generations in her family. So yeah, it's wow. not just for... And you think about the support system that yes. that builds for so, everybody in the family. Yeah, so Hector, you can so, take over now that I've yeah. been loud. Okay. <laughs> how, to, how to get involved. I'm somebody that maybe is <clears throat> just hearing about Celebrate Recovery the first time and think that it may be beneficial from, from that aspect. How do I get involved? You just simply come to any of the locations. Every location is going to be welcoming. Every location is going to have uh, familiar faces. Every location does have food. You know, food is a, a good thing that bring yeah. people in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you sit there and you talk, and then you get adjusted to it. It's a great thing. Yeah. And the hardest part is walking in the door, believe it or yes. not. We have yeah. so many people that come in with just... I mean, you could just see the yeah. fear on their face, yes. but then they're leaving with red eyes and a smile on their face afterwards, and they're saying, why did I wait so long? Yeah, yeah. Because just really a family environment. Yes, it is. So on the other side of that, maybe I'm somebody that wants to get involved helping with this program. How would I go about doing that? Uh, you would contact uh, Hector and myself at the Cross Church, or you would get a hold of, for the Lutheran, you would get a hold of Joe or Patty Brady over there at the Lutheran, St. John's Lutheran Church. Uh, for the DeLong, you would get a hold of Ricky or Nikki Klingler or Pat Allen. Okay. So at the Gospel Lighthouse. And I'm sure you're always looking for folks to be involved in these programs and really need experience on both ends of it. It, we have some fantastic uh, mentors that are coming alongside us right now and as I was saying this morning back there before we started we looked at the success rate in, of those that come to celebrate recovery and what's making them so successful and it's those healthy mentors that they have yeah. and if you think that you have a lived experience with anxiety drugs anything that you can offer to celebrate recovery to any of the locations reach out because that's what it's about it's about that town coming you know the community coming together and just helping each other and definitely does not make you an uber driver or an atm or any of that thing just you come together and you give them your your lived experience yeah. and your support yeah. yeah and that's what it's about one other thing that i wanted to mention this morning this program <clears throat> called road to recovery or so we don't have a whole lot of details about that but that's probably something that will be coming soon it is um, a pretty exciting event um, so Stay tuned for more details. This will be the third year for that. Yay. So, and we're still looking for somebody that can outwalk Hector or Jay. Yes. <laughs> so if you if you're up for a step challenge, maybe we can yes. get you on that. But um, uh, just a wonderful event that shares resources and kind of builds on the the Celebrate Recovery programs and Recovery Cafe and yes. um, all of the programs that we have in our community that are for dealing with whether it be substance abuse or other negative habits in the yeah. community. So yes. Well, we've been speaking with Hector and Debbie Fernandez. Thanks for joining us today and thanks for Thank representing you. the Celebrate Recovery programs. Anything you want to share before as we wrap up that 
No, just thankful for the community that we have that we're bringing yes. awareness to these things and we don't have to, you know, sweep them under the bed. Because before yeah. this started happening, people would think they were so uniquely messed up that nobody was like them. And the most important part about Celebrate Recovery, whether we're in the jails or in the churches, is that last hour of Celebrate Recovery when we take the masks off. We live in a society we've been told, pull up your pants, deal with it, suck it up. Uh, that's why when people ask us how we are, we say we're fine. But in small groups of Celebrate Recovery, it's time to take that mask off and share. And then you realize you're sitting across from someone who has been through the same thing that you have. So that is, and the community in this town is amazing because it's all of us working together. Just like the hand is just as important as the foot. And it's all together for the same purpose. So we're excited. Yes, and the small groups are <laughs> confidential. What's shared in the group stays in the group. And, you know, we tell the people in the group, talk it out before you act it out. Yes. And, you know, it goes a long way. If you can talk about your problems, saying I had a crappy day, you know, it, it's just so relieving to share your struggles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on behalf of the community and all that's involved, um, thank you for yes. the passion that you put in to celebrate recovery. I get to see this all the time. I occasionally get texts from Debbie saying, hey, this happened, or I stop in and see her. It's, it's really neat to see how this program, and, and you think about folks realizing that, hey, there are people out there that want to help me. Mm -hmm. They're not going to judge me and say, well, you shouldn't have done that. They're going to say, okay, well, here's where you are, and we're going to help support you in this situation. Amen. So thank you to you and all of the groups that are providing these Celebrate Recovery programs and recovery services in our community. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Yes, so, thank you. And we'll be looking forward to playing some softball this fall with the Road to Recovery program. Mm -hmm. Road to Recovery 3 right. family event. Yeah. Oh, don't get them started. <laughs> so, Thank anyway, you guys. if you have questions about anything we talked about, um, whether it be a grant application, you've got art, or you just have an idea for the community, yeah. you can always get a hold of us. Um, check us out online, nicf.org. That's where we'll have our grant applications and things like that. Um, give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to hear any ideas you have for the community or how how the Community Foundation can help you make Fulton County a better place. All right. And of course, if you do still have questions about uh, uh, Celebrate Recovery, you can find Hector walking the streets of uh, Fulton County. Yes. <laughs> He'll gladly uh, and I'm sure take he, a few minutes yes. out to tell you all about yes. it. Yes, come yes. join me, please. <laughs> yes. He'll share the excitement. If you can keep up with him, that yes. is. Yes. <laughs> it might be easier to drive beside him and talk to him. There you go. <laughs> I'm willing to do that. All right, thank you guys so much. And uh, Brian, we'll see you all again right. next month. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.